Hello, my name is Juliana. Um, I am a Chinese cishet woman um, and born to a mother who's from Hong Kong when it was still a British colony and a father who is from mainland China, Guangdong province. Um, I am a uninvited settler uh, occupying the ancestral lands of Musqueam, Spanish, Stolo, Tooth uh, peoples, um, currently occupying these lands that are unceded and they are ancestral territories of these peoples. How did you get into counseling? I always grew up being very curious and wanting to know why. So it's like my kid that you had going, why, why, why? <laughs> Um, for better or for worse, I guess, for my elders. Um, but I've always wanted to know why. Specifically, why do people act the way they do? Why do people say the things they say? Why do people say one thing and do things another way? Like, like it never made sense to me. Um, and and then from my own experience too, I always wanted to understand. Okay, why do people treat me the way they treat it? Um, why do they? Why do they? Like, why does it hurt? I don't understand. Um, and so there was always that desire of, I want to understand why people are the way they are. And in a sense, wanting to get that answer for myself, but also want to understand like, okay, if I understand people, is there a way to help them through their own struggles, through their own wonderings and whys as well? Um, and so that led me to study <laughs> psychology in Simon Fraser University. And then later on to criminology because I love crime dramas. Um, CSI was my <laughs> was my guilty pleasure, and yet I was always fascinated about like why, like what drove your motivations to doing what you're doing? How did you make sense of it all? Um, and for some people, it, it was like realizing, oh, there's actually a deep reason as to why, a deep rooted reason, be it a desire. Um, a, a really deep motivation to make things right or a deep pain that that was never addressed and they're still trying they're trying to address it now just maybe not always in the most helpful ways or in a super innovative creative way who knows but that's really why <laughs> to understand is there anything that surprises you about being a counselor now that you're here I think I'm never I'm always surprised at the resilience of people and just the sheer creativity in people. Uh, be it come though in like innovation or just in how creative people can be. Um, I love art, I love dance. And so creativity, <laughs> I'm not a very creative person, but just being able to experience that creative energy with people is something that really shows up in counseling. Um, I didn't know anime can be so be so relevant in counseling. And yet there are some stories in anime that are so beautiful and so useful in helping people kind of work through their own um, struggles, um, their own fears, um, even it resolves parts of grief too. There's some beautiful stories out there that we can actually draw from communally to kind of look inward and reflect on ourselves like, oh, right. And is there a little bit of that character in me? Um, and if there is, can I also make that leap, make that journey towards healing and wholeness? And so I'm always touched by how, I guess, as I'm processing out, I'm always touched by that creative connectedness, connectedness that we all share, that we all we can all collectively draw from. And from there, it's like that inner resilience just blooms and grows. Um, so I'm always surprised by that. And I guess in a sense, um, always surprised at how common it is. Um, it is in everyone. It just needs the right conditions to grow. So kind of jumping off on that, why do you think counseling works? Can I have a tasty, spicy thought? <laughs> counseling may not always work, I guess. Um, it's kind of like saying, um, you know, in medic like in medication advertisements, like, you know, everyone, like one in five, find this effective. Well, that's actually terrible static to six, but like it may not always work for everyone because everyone is different. Everyone's needs are, comp everyone's different, multifaceted. 
and so and complex and so what we need as treatment will be multifaceted multi-layered and complex and for some people maybe quite a portion of people counseling might work for some people they're like nah counseling just quite, doesn't quite work and that's okay that's what makes us us in all our multi-varied multi-complex ways <laughs> but I guess for the people where counseling could be helpful I mean, it certainly can be a really helpful starting point to kind of like process out loud. What is it that you might be feeling? Process out, you know, what are some things that are kind of tangling you up inside and, um, you know, making it hard for you to, to maybe concentrate, focus, you know, get on and do what you need to do in your day. And it's going to be a really good leading point, really, to just kind of say all these things out loud. Because sometimes it gets really like muddled and tangled in your mind. But when you start talking about it out loud, you're like, oh, hey, so that's actually what I've been feeling and thinking. Okay, cool. And then from there, you know, maybe continue on with counseling or at least from there, there's like some clarity and insight. So yeah, counseling is certainly an option, certainly a good place to start. Um, I'm, I'm a counselor myself, so I'm biased. I say it does work. But there's also, I want to be open to possibility that for some folks, like it might be not exactly the right thing. That's totally okay. For the people that does work, like I, I think it's just really cool to be able to see people reclaim their story and rebuild their story in a way that is true, that is authentic to them. And then once that hits, once that clicks, once that momentum builds, um, it's like, okay, yeah, I, there's, there's no stopping this. Um, let's keep moving forward. As we're talking about your counseling work, what would you describe as your approach to counseling? My approach, um, I guess, for like counseling words, it's like from a narrative perspective where it's very centered around, you know, you as a client. You know, how do you like who's how are you telling your story? What is your story? Beginning, middle, end, or maybe right in the middle, we can start there too. But really it's about what is your story? What do you think actually, what is what do you think your story is? And from there, we kind of go on like an exploratory kind of journey. Like, okay, like who told you that? Who told you that this was part of your story? Where'd you learn that from? Um, and, you know, kind of dare to even ask the question as we're wondering and discovering and exploring, dare to ask this question of, do you think that's true? Like, do you yourself think that is true? And if it's not, oh, you know, what do you think is true then? What actually feels true? What actually feels right, correct, accurate um, for you? And I think that's where the fun, fun, I suppose, begins. For some, for some, it could be quite, you know, quite jostling. Like, oh, what do you mean it's not true? Oh. For some, it's like, oh, oh, yeah, it's not true. So let me tell you what is true. And so it's this really, I would say this exploratory journey of, you know, understanding the context, the cultures, the society, the systems that we're in, and, the, you know, kind of tracking and tracing the story that have been told about us, about other people from there. And really, um, between me and, you know, the client, it's like, you know, wondering, creating, brainstorming, um, maybe even experimenting a little here and there. Of, okay, are these things true? If not, how can we shake that up a little? How can we change that? Um, you know, you, you've always been told that, like, at least I'll use myself as an example, I've always been told I'm a rambunctious, troublemaking kind of person. And it's only through therapy with my therapist that it's like, I'm reclaiming that and saying, actually, no, I'm curious, very curious. I have a sarcastic wit. <laughs> I also have an aura of comfy. <laughs> um, and um, I actually do have some creativity in me. It just shows up differently. And so uh, a lot of in my work and of my approach is really like reclaiming that story from the system reclaiming that story from people who may not have actually an accurate perspective on us um, and for us to give that to ourselves for us to actually you know kind of build up the courage and bravery to give that perspective to ourselves 
and to learning to kind of accept all parts of ourselves. Probably is the hardest part actually, to accept all the parts, the shiny parts and the unshiny parts, but also learning to love and appreciate the unshiny parts too. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> No, that was great. I really resonated with that. I always have been told since I was a kid that I was argumentative, that the the moment I learned to uh, talk, I started to bok jo, like to, ar- like to argue with my parents. <laughs> that is me as well. Yeah. And so I was like, ooh, <laughs> I get you. <laughs> what do you think about like multidisciplinary practice and integrating that mm. into um, your talk therapy practice? How does that look? Um, mm. And what are just your general thoughts on that? Well, I would say um, if you were to, you know, hurt your arm, break your arm, for example, heaven forbid, (laughs) breaking your arm. But if you were to break your arm, what happens? You probably end up going to the doctor, you may need surgery, so you're going to a surgeon, you have to take an x-ray, so see an x-ray tech, you know, afterwards, probably have to go physio, maybe see an occupational therapist, see a kinesiologist, massage therapy. I mean, just in the recovery of an, of an arm, you need a multidisciplinary team. And so I think in counseling, it makes sense that you need, a, you probably would like to have a multidisciplinary team, whether or not we have access to that, that's another, you know, system, systemic issue. But like our healing is complex. So our treatment is going to be complex, which means what is needed to help you recover is going to be complex. You're going to need more than just one person, one modality, one therapy. It's going to be a bit of experimenting. Okay, what works? What doesn't work? Oh gosh, definitely not that. Hey, this kind of helps generate movement. This kind of help generates and helps progress. Let's keep going in that direction. We might keep, we might be onto something here. And so for me, um, with my practice, you can expect a lot of experimentation um trying to figure out what works um I do quite a bit of things not just talk but like I really do like do experiential exercises um it's one thing to kind of talk about acceptance or talk about love security and safety it's another to actually experience it and so really finding ways to experience that connection um not just talking about it but also experience it in your body and then connecting the two I find is really, really helpful. Um, There's walk and talk. Um, There's something really healing about nature. Um, So I'm excited uh, to do that as well, where we can just walk and talk, have some tea, you know, nice and cozy and just be in like amongst the trees in a park, of course, not in in, in the boonies. (laughs) I don't want to feed the mosquitoes, but I mean, that's what's helpful for you, sure. But um, but yeah, just being able to sit in the park and just talk. Um, and that might be helpful as well, because sometimes just sitting across from each other in a room can be very intimidating. Um, maybe even a virtual space, it could be very exhausting. Um, so sometimes maybe in nature might be helpful too. Um, um, coming from a dancing background, it's like using all of your body, using all of your senses, using all of oh, as many muscles as we can, supposedly can really help um, us in our healing journey. Because again, it's that connection, rebuilding, reclaiming that connection between ourselves and the world and our our bodies. So um, yeah, and I'm also, you know, open to collaborating with other, um, I guess, health people, professionals in your team, because that's what really healing is about, right? It's a teamwork, it's a community thing. it's 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 what that's actually what brings us all into whole healing like it's not just a relationship between you and another person it's you and your environment and nature you and the system you and society you and the culture you and your community you and your family and then you and yourself and your body like that's like for me that's what healing is it's very holistic so multidisciplinary is like a facet of holistic healing so roundabout way of answering the question (laughs) No, I thought that was very thorough. This is really good. Um, so final question, actually, no, scratch that. Not final question. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> what does anti-oppression mean to you and how does that translate into your practice? It's always those words that you, that you're like, oh, I know what that means. And then when you sit down and think, hmm, do I? 
um, it's hard to define. Um, for me, anti-oppression means that I am always a learner, always. There's always something to learn. I make many mistakes. Um, and so it's it's um, really from a place of learning because I know I'll make many mistakes. And so it's like, okay, how can I always do better? How can I always move forward with like a better understanding, better, hence with better integrity, so to speak, um, and better, better, empathy really better empathizing with the person um i i am not i'm only myself i am not any other person um and so for me anti-oppressiveness is to continue to learn continue to keep up to date with what's going on with the world um witness what is happening in the world instead of turning away because that's really privilege right privilege is being able to turn the channel whereas for those of us who are less privileged that channel you can't switch which we can't switch it that is our life, right? And so for me, it's like to witness, to not look away, really look at what is happening and allowing myself to feel. And then from that, from those feelings of like grief, hurt, desire to do more, do better, to move forward, but also in a way that is like treading lightly, treading respectfully, treading carefully, um, and always learning. Um, always always learning observing um, and then for myself also learning to ask for help ask for clarity that's something I need to learn um, but always from a position of like I guess hopefully humble learning <laughs> um, and I say that because it's it's like I, I feel bad to make mistakes um, because it's like oh I'm doing harm and so realizing, right, when, so when I'm learning, I'm also learning from the mistakes and also asking people to extend that mercy and compassion and grace. Like, hey, I'm, I'm really sorry, learning here. Um, can we try again? Because um, that's still a big ask for other people. So um, understanding that is the ask I'm making. Um, and then in my actions, showing that respect, care and honor for that for that mercy. That's great. I think that's a really full answer. Um, so final question, really the final question this time. Uh, <laughs> for the prospective people who are watching this video and are hoping to work with you and really connect with what you're saying, what should they expect for their first session with you? You can expect that um, to be quite chill, really. Um, I the way I kind of see my sessions as I was thinking about them today is um, it's almost like we're sitting together on a park bench or on a couch together. I have a cup of tea and you have a cup as well of coffee or tea or whatever, you know, strikes your fancy. And we're just chatting. Um, it's a place where you can be yourself. Um, it's comfy, it's cozy, it's safe. Um, Home can be a complex word for some, but I hope that it is a place where it feels like home to you, a home where you can just be at ease. Um, and we're just chatting. You can expect humor as well. Humor, sarcasm, memes, pop culture. Because <laughs> um, this is where we draw life from at times. Um, um, exploratory, creative, playful curiosity. Uh, space to just kind of maybe even sit with some of our feelings some of the discomfort and knowing that hey I'm I'm right here with you we're both sitting in it together I'm right here with you you're not alone in it um, and we go at a pace that feels comfortable you can set the pace you set the topic I may have some suggestions but ultimately you're the one who gets to dictate you as in the client you are the one who gets to dictate where we want to go how far we want to go and if you need a break need a rest okay, by all means that's it you're done how does that feel oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, my back. I thought that was really good <laughs> Um, 
Can I include Whoa. that in the take? Because I love that. Oh, <laughs> of my favorite drag queen, Jay Coulet. <laughs> <laughs> you can't shake the sun. <laughs> uh, and with that, 